The zones of Chernobyl are hard to survive, but I'm hope I'm here to make it a little easier. I will go from town to town, showing you guys the things I wish I knew. And today, we'll focus on the swamp. Now, before we even get to the swamp, the tutorial. Everybody hates the tutorial. People normally speed run through it, and finish it up as fast as they can to go regroup with their friends, or have some fun in the zone. But what I realized, is that they give you an assortment of weapons to try out. And with the way that the weapon tree works, you can figure out exactly what you want to focus before you even get into the game. Here's an example of something I realized when I replayed the tutorial for the second time. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what weapons can be equipped on the secondary slot. So far it's just pistols and shotguns. But during my second playthrough of the tutorial, I found this Mac 10. Surprisingly I was able to equip it as my secondary weapon. What I also realized is that this weapon doesn't have a little lock symbol on it and it's nowhere to be found in the tree later in the game. Which leads me to believe that you find this weapon in the open world and that if you die you lose it. Okay, now you finished the tutorial, you tried all the guns, and now you're at the swamp trying to figure out what do I build first. What I would recommend is to build armor and not any kind of armor science armor. The reason for it is that at the beginning you're gonna spend a lot of time gathering a lot of materials to keep progressing through your gun progression and you would want to be able to walk around freely to gather those materials. The sooner you get through this science tree the better. In Stallcraft crafting is not as straightforward as it seems. In order to build the MS-99 you need to be in garage if you don't want to do a lot of back and forth from swamp and garage, you might as well stick around in the swamp. The raincoat is the first item in your science tree. You can pretty much get it from the beginning. Now, the best thing to do to gather materials to upgrade your arsenal is to get those red symbols in this area. There's going to be a lot of them here. But be careful over here. The further up north you go, the more likely you'll engage in PvP. Once you've completed the quick quests in town, this is the gear that you're supposed to be getting out with your first adventure. Remember, not all creatures you need to be wasting ammo for. Dogs and rats, you can melee them. It's quieter and you're not wasting ammo. Also, don't forget to loot around into boxes and crates. And look carefully because you can find some pretty hidden boxes that nobody else will loot. The flesh is a lot harder to melee, and the boars, so make sure you shoot those. As you can see, by killing the animals, that's how I get the swamp mold. If you want to see where all these events spawn, I'm going to leave a link in the description for the map I use. As you can see, once I get some distance, things start respawning behind me. Basically, you can keep running around and get a lot of loot.
Now that we're here next to this water pond, let me show you a little trick I learned. Look at how slow I'm walking through water. Now instead of walking through water, try proning before getting in. As you can see, we swimming a lot faster. If you want to gather swamp stone, you need to defeat opposite faction camps. For that, you will need to venture into enemy territory. So gear yourself to be able to PvP. Once you have about 40 stone and 40 mold, you can go back to base and start upgrading your things. When you're back in base, if you still can't build certain weapons or items, check your base level by clicking on the icon in the map. For our purposes, we only really need to level it to 4. During the tutorial, I figured out what guns I want to upgrade. I got to try it out at its full potential, and it grew on me. Look at that recoil control. I don't even have to do anything really to keep that straight. But when I don't control it at all, it doesn't even just fly up, it slowly goes up. I love it, that's why I decided to go with the L85 route. This weapon will help me to get those extra levels to get my armor upgraded. When you're out there exploring, make sure you pay attention to that player counter on the top left corner of your map. One thing I should mention, there's gonna be a lot of dying in this game. In my travels, I've discovered this anomaly. I wasn't sure if that's gonna kill me or not, but at some point, I was like, you know what? This looks like that sphere that was showing up in my dreams. So I decided to check it out. I was so confused, but yet so happy that I'm not dead. These kind of anomalies will teleport you to an enemy location. So be prepared when you're jumping into one. So you finally got all the points to get yourself to level 4. It's time to upgrade the armor. This will let you survive small amounts of radiation, like the radiation in the water, which will let you swim. There's one last thing you need to craft before you leave the swamp. Two bags. And it's because the science class armor can only carry the sports bag. But you still would want to build a backpack for later use. So if you make two bags now, you will need to come back later. Another reason why you won't need to come back later is because you made the 4M armor. Since building the Zara armor costs more than it is to upgrade it. As you can see, it costs half the materials to upgrade it than it is to build it. This is pretty much it, once you reach this point, this is pretty much what your equipment will kind of look like depending on the weapon you chose. Now you would want to go to garage using this gate. Good luck on your travels and see you on the other side. Thanks everybody for watching, hopefully you guys learned something out of it. Keep an eye out for the next video which is going to focus on garage and all you need to know to not get killed by enemy players.